Okay, we're back. So I added several things to this level. I added some more ledges and, sl and some slopes here. Um, there's some clouds up there, a donut bridge, and again, some piranha plants. Again, all these things are mostly standard objects. I believe this one is a tile set specific object. Um, one thing you'll notice, I also used, you can see the difference here between a solid edge and just a regular edge and this one has a solid top so Mario could pass through these from the side this one he cannot this one he can so just one thing to notice um, I, left a, I left a few things undone here I need to fill in some spaces with uh, dirt tiles like this uh, one other thing you'll notice a little bit to the right of what I'm editing now there is a ledge tile and it's underneath a slope tile and you'll notice that you can see quite a bit of the ledge tile sort of poking out underneath that slope and uh, in a second I'm gonna highlight the slope and you'll see that it actually overlaps or underlaps the ledge which is shown by this little red strip there so with, li with lunar magic you can determine which objects appear in front of other objects through something that's very common in other areas called Z order. So an object with a higher Z order will appear in front of an object with a lower Z order. So there's two ways to do this. I can either highlight the slope and pull it forward by raising its Z order, or I can highlight the ledge and push it back by reducing its Z order. Now if you go up into the edit, um, if you press edit up here, you can increase Z order or you can decrease Z order and you'll see that there's keys, there's hotkeys for this. The equal sign increases and the minus sign decreases. So I'm gonna highlight this ledge here and I'm basically gonna either repeatedly press or just press and hold my minus key until it goes behind the slope tile and you can see that now it shows that red strip there. So this looks much nicer. Uh, let's see, I wanted to add, let's add some water here so standard objects there's regular water which is at the very top and then there's here with uh, water with animated surface I like that one quite a bit so let's put that one in uh, one thing you want to avoid oh okay so again there's a limit to how far you can stretch something horizontally usually so we have to do that again try to avoid stuff like this where you've got water tiles that are just sort of floating in midair like that it just looks it just looks terrible so uh, anything else okay now let's start adding some things like question blocks and what have you so I'm gonna go to extended objects and let's give Mario a power up so let's find let's find a question block with something in it so question block with a flower inside now it says it has a flower inside but if Mario is small it'll have a mushroom instead so we'll put that there let's move over here uh, we need a vine to get up to these clouds so I'm gonna go find the turn block with a vine inside and this is a good opportunity to describe what this what it says here turn block coin star 2 slash 1 up slash vine and then in parentheses it says x divided by 3 so let's paste this into the level. If you hover over these objects, you can see a little a little pop-up window. It tells you what they are. It says a turn block with a star two, one up, or a vine inside, depending on its X position. Currently, as it currently it has a star two inside. If you're wondering what a star two is, uh, if you're Mario and you have a star, it'll give you a star. Otherwise, it'll have a coin. It's one of those things. So what happens is this: depending on its X position, the object inside will change. So this is X equals one now it's two, now it's three, now it's four, etc, etc. What it does is it takes the x position, it divides it by three, takes the remainder, and based on that it determines what's inside it at that moment. So if I put it here, let's see what it has now. It has a vine inside. Well that's exactly what I want, so that's, what I, that's, that's how I'd like it to be. If I were to move this over by one, like that, now it says currently it has a one up inside. If I move it over again, now it says currently has a star 2 inside. If I move it over yet again, now it goes back to having a vine inside. So this block is going to rotate, you know, every three spaces, it's going to rotate back to the same thing. Uh, that's because it's x divided by 3. If it, you know, Some other ones will say divided by 2 or divided by 4. 
things like that. Uh, let's put also a let's put a gray cement block just to stop the vine up at the top like this. Okay. Okay. What else can we put? We can put oh the goal. Okay. So the goal point is a standard object. So let's go find that. Here's the goal point. Now, when you put in a goal point, you'll notice that it has if you if you put it down like this, you can see underneath there there's this there's, it doesn't look quite right. And you're actually supposed to put it into the ground like that one tile down. Now, that doesn't look quite right either. What you have to do is you have to bring you have to push the goal back or bring the ground forward, either one. So I'm going to push the goal back just like I did earlier. Decrease its Z order by pressing the minus key and holding it. Now that's just the goal point. We don't actually have the goal tape in there yet. And we're going to add that now. In fact, we're going to start adding sprites now. So go up to the toolbar. Again, the second group of buttons. There's three buttons. The third one is a shell. We click that. Now we're in sprite editing mode. So the goal tape is a standard sprite. So let's go find that. And here we go. Standard goal point, and just underneath it, it says secret goal point. The difference is standard goal point will um, trigger the normal exit for a level. Secret goal point will trigger the secret exit if it has one. So we're going to put a standard goal point in. I'm going to right click. And you'll notice I put it at the very bottom of, of this goal point. I see, I see a lot of times something like that. Well, what will happen is in game, this sprite is going to start here at the bottom and then it's going to go up and it's going to go past the top and then it's going to come back down. So the the spot you place it in Lunar Magic is the bottom of it in game, if that makes sense. So you need to put it at the bottom. Uh, now we can start adding enemies. So let's start adding enemies. Now most of your enemy, well some of your enemies are in standard sprites like Koopas so we can let's get a green Koopa maybe here and maybe some red Koopas with shells down here something like that you know that's good uh, let's do some tile set specific sprites those are enemies that you see related to the level or related to tile sets now again I mentioned a lot of these look glitchy right from the get-go the reason is this every level low well sorry all the graphics in Super Mario World are divided into tile sets so that includes the foreground objects, the background design, and the sprites. All the graphics are divided into tile sets. With the sprite tile sets, all the sprites that belong together, all of their graphics will appear in one tile set. Now if you look up top here, you'll see this thing It says SP4 equals 0, 2. That becomes very important in a second, and it's different for different sprites. So let's say I want to add a pokey, if I can find pokey, because we all love pokey. Here's Pokey. That does not look good, but let's put it in anyway. We say screw it, we want Pokey, let's put Pokey. Dun, 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 dun. Now, if I were to save this level as it is and play it like this, when I get to this part of the level, this is what I'm going to see. I'm going to see this horribly glitched out Pokey with a Rex head and whatever. The reason is this. Go back to the Add Sprites window. It says SP4 equals 09 up in this top left corner. If you go back up to the toolbar, there's a group of four buttons here, starting with a poison mushroom. Click on that poison mushroom. It says Change Graphics and Header. You can change the foreground and background graphics. So these are the tile sets that it will load for the foreground and background. You can also change the sprite graphics and this will change which tile sets are loaded for sprite graphics. That's what we're going to do. So in this second drop box, we're going to find a setting that has SP4 equals 09, which is this one. Notice it says Pokey. I'm not sure why Pokey specifically, but basically in the parentheses it shows you a name for this setting. So forest, castle, mushroom, underground, water, ghost house, whatever. So we're going to select Pokey. Again, SP4 equals 09 matches the add sprite window. Automatically, you'll see a change. Now, Pokey looks proper. So do these Pokies. That's what you want. So now, when I add sprites in this level, I'm going to choose. I'm going to specifically choose sprites 
that have the same value here for sp4. So I need something where sp4 equals 0, 09. I know volcano lotus is. So let's put a volcano lotus somewhere. I don't know, maybe here or yeah, maybe there. Something like that. And uh, pitch and chuck. Yep, sp4 equals 0, 09. Maybe I'll put them on the donut bridge. And so on and so forth. So uh, basically, I'm going to just go through, add some sprites, and when we come back, we'll finish up.